it's Chelsea. Today I'm doing a semi-requested video, but one that I thought that a couple of you guys might enjoy. For those of you guys that are new to my channel, please subscribe. My name's Chelsea. I travel around the country full-time in a 21-foot camper trailer, and being on the road means that there are going to be a lot of days filled with adventure but there's also gonna be days where it's nothing but driving for 16 hours straight and there's gonna be days where it rains and you can't go outside and you're stuck in a camper for a day. So that being said, I read a lot and as you probably guessed from the title of this video, um, I'm gonna share with you guys the top five books I would seriously recommend for entertainment. These five books are some of my favorite ones I've ever read and I will say I read a lot. Let's just get into these. The first one is called 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. Murakami is probably my favorite author of all time. He's a Japanese author. Um, all his books are written in Japanese and are translated into English, however, the translations are spot on. You can still follow the stories perfectly and he is a really cool like fiction author. One of the reasons that I like him so much is because when he starts his book, any of his books, he starts it in a way that is so like realistic sounding. Like when you're reading it, you're like, oh yeah, I'm here, I'm with these characters, you know? He really gradually eases into these worlds that these bizarre things happen, but by the time that you get to those points where these bizarre things are happening, you're like right there with it. You're like, oh yeah, this is perfectly reasonable. Why wouldn't fish fall from the sky? You know what I mean? So he's got this really great way of sucking you into his stories. And this story in particular, this is probably his most well-known novel that he's written. This one takes place in Tokyo and there are two main characters here. One of them is a girl. She's a very like plain looking girl but her job is to kill people. She's essentially like a hitman. She has this method of killing that is essentially untraceable. They mostly like think that these are natural deaths occurring. Her story kind of parallels this other guy's story. His name is Tango and he is a novelist. He's a math teacher who writes books on the sides and it's really cool because it explores these like parallel universes where this book that this novelist is writing is somehow making a truth for the girl who's a hitman and it's the way that these stories like intermingle and tangle with each other and entwine is really really cool and you're like intensely waiting for the end to see if they ever cross paths or not or if it's even possible because of these parallel universes it's a really cool book it's probably my favorite book of all time which is really hard to say i, I have a lot of favorite books but I know that this author is definitely my favorite all of all time. So um, 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. If you ever get the chance to pick this thing up, do it, listen to the audiobook while you drive. You will be missing out on life if you don't read this book. The second book that I have to recommend is called The Plague by Albert Camus, who is also another one of my favorite writers. This particular book is about a sickness that breaks out in this town. It's essentially the bubonic plague. The town ends up getting quarantined and kind of explores these different characters, takes on the bubonic plague and how it's affecting them. But really the reason that I like this book so much is probably because of the author himself. You can look at this book and analyze human suffering because in the beginning when this plague is happening, People are really consumed with the fact that this is affecting them personally and their personal suffering is hard. And then as time goes on with this plague and the quarantine, it becomes kind of a collective suffering of the entire community. And then also explores like the concept of optimism in this book because Camus was an atheist and he thought that death is kind of this end-all be-all thing that's going to happen like whether or not you fight it or not. So even though he believes that nothing happens to you after death that you can still find meaning in life, that's optimism. So like with this plague, even though it seems like 
daunting and that there is really going to be no cure for this and that everyone's going to die here, they are still choosing to fight against this plague and in a sense like rebel against it. I don't know, it's just really cool and even if you're not into like uh, the deeper theories of it or like the deeper analysis of it or whatever, you can still read it and it's still a really cool story. Whether or not you're religious, this is just an author's story and it's not a reflection of your personal beliefs or my personal beliefs, it's still just an interesting thing to think about and Camus is also one of my favorite authors. He's a really cool mind so check him out. The third book on my list is called Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Going away from the really heavy deep emotional parts of the plague that I just talked about, Ready Player One is a really cool, fun, exciting, dystopian novel and this book takes place in 2044 and the world has kind of gone to shit. The only real escape that people have is by signing into the Oasis, which is essentially a virtual reality internet. Where we just get on the internet and go on YouTube or Google or Twitter or whatever, these people in the future, not too far in the future, have these entire virtual reality suits that they can put on and it really helps submerge them into these other worlds and essentially what happens in this book is that there is a treasure hunt of sorts within the oasis where millions of players are going and signing online to finish this treasure hunt the treasure that they get in this virtual reality world is going to be a treasure that they obtain in real life which because everything in the actual world has gone to shit, this treasure can really help them live a life that they want. It's really cool to think about how that might be the only option for us one day to really escape our own reality if we don't take care of the world. I'm not trying to get political here, but like, you know, being a traveler, I have traveled to some of the most beautiful, natural places in the United States it kills me every time I see loads of garbage there, how these places are being affected by pollution. Once again, not trying to get political at all, I'm just saying this is a really cool book. Ready Player One, Ernest Cline, check that one out. It's a really great audiobook as well. And they're actually turning it into a movie this year, so I definitely recommend reading books before you watch movies. Number four is called Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, and this book takes place in the 12th century and it follows these characters in the 12th century and it's about building a cathedral in a town called Kingsbridge which sounds really boring i know but it's the characters in these in this book that makes it so interesting because it really is an accurate portrayal of what living in the 12th century was like. You really come to fall in love with a lot of these characters and you lose a bunch of them and you gain a few and I wouldn't say that there is like a total main character of this book. All the characters that you meet definitely are there for a reason and their stories overlap at points and it's just really cool to see how everyone is functioning together but they really do have one of the best villains. This book has one of the best bad guys I've ever read about. I hated him so much while I was reading this book and it's just really an adventure while you're reading because you find yourself cheering for people and then feeling really sad for people and then wanting people to die and god it's just really really good book and then also it did give me a huge appreciation for cathedrals and churches um like when i went to spain and i was at that basilica i was looking at the pillars in there and the shape of the church itself and everything and i was just like dang and looking at the stained glass windows and everything and i just had much more of an appreciation for this type of architecture than i did prior to reading this book so check it out it's a really really cool book and number five on the list is going to be slaughterhouse five by kurt vonnegut this is like a cult classic book and when people ask 
why this is a cult classic. It's really hard to describe to them why so many people have fallen in love with this book. And if someone asks you what it's about, it's really hard to describe to them what this book is about because it's kind of all over the place, which is very Kurt Vonnegut. But this is a war novel. It follows a character called Billy Pilgrim. You learn about his life in little pieces throughout this book, but it's not in chronological order because Billy Pilgrim can travel through time. So he visits these different points in his life and you learn about them as they come. So at one point it visits this period of time in his life where he was a prisoner of war. He was in Germany. In this part of the story, this is where you find out where the title of the book actually comes from. When you read this part of it and it says Slaughterhouse Five in there, you're like, oh my god. It's like a it's like a mind-blown moment because of how significant this is. And you never would think that I don't know. It's a, it's a really cool part of the book to find out and read through. At another point in time in his life, uh, Billy claims to have been kidnapped by aliens and so it takes you to this other planet where these aliens live and it talks about their perception of time and why they don't mourn over death and all because they can see time in a linear way but like all at once it's really 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 cool and it reminds me of when i used to study about like string theory and things like that so if you are interested in war stories time travel and aliens slaughterhouse five is your book and like i said it is a cult classic there is a reason that this book is so well renowned um, so definitely check it out and that concludes the top five books that I have for you guys right now. I've actually already started working on a whole nother list. If you guys are interested in it, I can put that video out too. So just let me know and please let me know what your favorite book is in the comments below because I am an avid reader and an avid learner and I'm consistently trying to find things to fill my brain with. Let me know what some of your favorites are and why, and who knows, I might make an entire video about it one day. <laughs> Once again, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you are a book person, probably gonna do a couple more videos about books. Let's talk about those together. I actually wanted to start a book club at one point. I don't know if that's ever gonna happen, but it's cool to think about. So <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one and thanks again.